What is up everybody? So check it out. McDonald's just got their soul stomped in the court of law when they lost a lawsuit. They were sued by 38,000 employees of McDonald's and they had to pay these employees 26 million dollars. That's crazy. So check it out. Routers actually has the story on this and they had said, quote, the preliminary settlement resolves claims that the company used a timekeeping system that cheated workers out of overtime. Kind of a bitch move. Barred workers from taking rest breaks during their shifts that made the workers take their breaks before or after the shift, not during, and forced workers to clean and iron their uniforms out of pocket. It resolves, the lawsuit resolves, claims by about 38,000 cashiers and cooks in California and is the largest wage settlement against Chicago-based McDonald's in the United States representatives for the plaintiffs said. All right, this is an just an enormous win for employees across the United States. We've had so many problems with Amazon, which I will touch on in a different video because I worked for Amazon. Amazon, Walmart, Fred Myers, McDonald's. Well, guess what? We finally won. Granted, everybody's gonna say, well, guess what? It's only $26 million. It's not gonna affect them financially. I don't give a shit. That's not the point. The point is that we finally won something. We finally won. And there's also a larger moral to this story, which is the necessity to have organized labor within the United States and globally, but I'm focusing specifically on the United States right now. Organized labor, good example of that would be unions. Here's a crazy part. Would you like to take a guess on the percentage of the American workforce that is actually in a union? What do you think? 50, 40%, 60, 70, 80%, guess what? It is only 10%. That is it, 10% of the American workforce is in a union. And oftentimes people are using the commonly held argument as to why this is, which is what about the globalized multinational companies that are out there who compete with the lowest common denominator? So they don't like the American workforce, they'll move it over to China or move it over to Indonesia, somewhere that has a little bit more relaxed workers' rights and a little bit uh, cheaper wages. Let me be very clear. Multinational corporations are absolutely the problem. Everything that I just said was absolutely the case. However, there is another little quirk here that people aren't talking about, and that's the lack of unions in the U.S. government, or government workers, I should say. Would you like to guess the percentage of Americans working for the U.S. government that are in unions? It's only 37%. Only 6% of the United States' private sector is unionized. What we can learn here is the necessity to have more organized labor. McDonald's is a good case study about when that has been successful in the 21st century. We can use this as an example for why Amazon workers should do the same. Why we should read articles like this and post it to social media inspiring others. The way that I see it is that there is in fact power numbers. I know that's a cliche ass saying and I absolutely hate saying it. This is probably the only time I've ever said it out loud at least but it is true. And the way I see it is that we're already pissed off about the way that society currently is. So we might as well kind of use that for constructiveness. Is that a word? Constructiveness? We can apply it in a constructive manner and make better standards for jobs. That is the point of this video. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. If you did not, it is what it is. Thank you very much.